Hello there, thank you for taking in our video today on parent functions and transformations of parent functions. To start here, I would suggest that you pause this video, take a look at these two problems, give them your best effort, and then when you have finished, come back and check your answers. So let's take a look at the answers to our warm-up problems. So the first one, we're going to shift right to down four and reflect vertically. And the second one, obviously you can have many different answers for the second one here. This is just an example. The answer is probably the most basic example that I can give. All right, now before we go to the next slide, you should again pause this video and you should use your graphing utility to graph the six graphs that you see on this slide. Again, pause the video, do that, come back, and you can check what your graphs look like from there. So here's what the six graphs should look like, along with their names. It's very important that you also know their names. I'll be saying their names often in class. I'll say, for example, this is a quadratic function. This is a square root function. This is a cubic function, things like that. So we should know all six of these by name and by shape and a few general points on them as well. With that, let's take a look at the problems we're going to be working with today in this section. So for each problem, I'm going to ask us that we write which transform transformations will occur. We'll set the rule for each one, and then we'll use transformations to draw each graph. So let's start with our first one here. There's going to be two transformations that take place here. We're going to shift right two, and we're going to shift down one. So our vector rule is going to be x, y is going to go to x plus two, y minus one. For all these, we're going to draw the parent function in one color, I'm going to use black for the parent function. So the parent function of this would be y equals x squared, right? And then we can draw the actual function that we're drawing in a different color. So maybe we'll do this one in blue. We're going to shift it right to and down one. So all these points are going to move right to and down one. And that's what our new function should look like. All right, for B, we are going to shift left three and then also vertically stretch by two. All right, so our rule for this one is going to be x, y is going to go to x minus 3, 2, y. So let's start with the parent function. The parent function would be y equals root x. So some points that we should know here, we should look like that. And we will use red this time for our new function. So we're going to move all the x's left 3, and then double the y's. So our new points should look like that. Part C, four transformations taking place here. We are going to shift right five we're going to vertically stretch it by a scale factor of three. We're going to vertically reflect it. And we're going to vertically shift up two. So our rule for this one is going to be x, y 
it's going to go to x plus 5 and negative 3y plus 2. So let's start with our parent function. There's our parent function there. And then our new function, we're going to be shifted right five and up two, so our vertex will be right here. It's gonna be flipped down, but then also stretched by a scale factor of three. So it should look like this. Question D, we have three transformations taking place here. Uh, I'm sorry, let's go back to this one. Our parent function for this one was y equals absolute value of x. Parent function for this one is y equals x squared. I'm going to go ahead and plot that while we're at it. Okay, now for D, we have three transformations taking place here. We have a vertical stretch, scale factor of one half, actually it's a vertical compression, sorry, by a scale factor of one half. We're gonna vertically reflect it, and we're gonna vertically shift it up four. So everything's happening to the y values here, nothing happening to the x values for these problems. We're not moving this left or right at all. So our rule is going to be x, y. It's going to go to x, comma, negative 1 half y plus 4. So our new points, our vertex is going to be at 0, 4 now, and our other points we're going to compress this so it's going to look a little bit wider than our original graph. And it's also going to be moved to point down, open up down instead of opening up. This brings us to our last slide. It wouldn't be a bad idea if you wanted to pause the video this time and, and try these last two problems. If not, you can stay right here with us. We'll walk through these as well. So our parent function for E is Y equals root X. Let's go ahead and plot that. For this one, it's a good idea, before we do any work here, to factor out this two. So we can see what the shift is horizontally. And that's going to be a shift left five halves. And then we're going to vertically, sorry, let's actually do the horizontal one first here. Horizontally stretch by a scale factor of two. And we're going to vertically reflect it. And vertically shift it. Down six. You don't have to write vertical for that one. If you say shift down six, then I know that it's vertical. And remember for the compression, the stretch, if we say stretch by two, I, the better way of actually saying this is a, is a compression by one over two. We talked about that in yesterday's video. It's actually for horizontal, it's going to be x over that number there. So we actually should say we compress it by a scale factor of one half instead. All right, so let's take a look at our graph then. The new vertex is gonna go left five halves and down six. So it should be right about there. It's gonna reflect, so it's gonna be pointing downwards instead. And it's gonna be compressed a lot more, so it's gonna look a lot wider horizontally, but thinner vertically if you wanna think of it that way. So our Y values look like this.
But if you want to get some more exact y values, we can make a table or we can simply put numbers in if you wanted to. Uh, for example, if we wanted to put zero into that, we would get root five, so it would be negative root five minus six. Negative root five is a little bit smaller than negative two, so negative eight point something would be at zero, which is close to where we're at. Looks like we're maybe a little bit too low for that. Maybe somewhere around there. You can always get some more y values if you want to be perfect. But we're just looking to see if we can figure out these transformations and how the graph will look in general at this point. The last one, the cubic function is the parent function. So if I was to plot that parent function, it should look like that. Okay, and then our transformations, there's three of them here. We're going to shift left one. We're going to vertically stretch it by one half. And then we're going to shift down two. So our rule here, which I think we forgot to do for the last one, we can go back and do that in a second, but our rule here, x comma y is going to go to x minus 1 comma 1 half y minus 2. So our new vertex here, the, the new middle of the graph here is going to move to negative 1, negative 2. And again, it's going to become a little bit wider horizontally, thinner vertically when we do this here. So kind of look something like that. And again, we can always pick points to put in there and get actual y values back if we'd like. Going back to this one, the rule here. X, Y would be going to 1 half X minus 5 and then negative Y minus 6. All right, that will do it for our notes on parent functions and their transformations. Thanks, as always, for watching my video.